Hello gang, hello friends, hello gang friends, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this video finds you well. Are you well? I hope you're well. If you're new, hello, my name is Jo and I do nail stuff. She does stuff and nail stuff and the stuff she does with nail stuff with nail stuff and stuff and nails. got some more goodies from Madame Glam. Are you ready to see them? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? There we go. They have sent me all of their gel paints and some brushes as well. We'll have a look at these brushes with the lids off in a sec. Are we going to look at them in their tubes? Why not? We have a de we have an ombre brush, ombre brush, a detail liner, an uh, ultra liner, like a panty liner? Um... <laughs> And the other one was a something liner. We'll look at them in a sec. So these are all of the colours. But wait, look what I found under my desk. I'm so excited. I found this tray thing and it fits all of them in because I've got their neons as well. So that is all of the Madame Glam gel paints fit perfectly into this little organised tray. Oh, it makes me very happy. I was getting a bit excited so we'll have a look at them quickly all the colors in their pots i will save the best one to last and then we're going to do something with them so this is red and they have the names on the top of the pots which i like and then pink and then we have orange i think i was trying to go in rainbow order have you noticed my nails were they this color in the last video look at this yellow <gasps> Oh, it's like sunshine in a pot. Um, yes, I have bright nails on. I don't know. It's I ordered some colours from them. Well, <laughs> they sent me some colours. I wanted to get have some pick some bright colours for summer because I don't have all of their polishes yet. It's my goal in life. I still have a list of things I'm going to buy though. So that's one of the colours I've got on, and it's called Razzles Pink. I know, what am I doing wearing pink? But I love it. It's a bit more corally pink than it looks in the video here. It looks bonkers bright here. It is bright, but it's not quite as raw as it looks on camera. So now I've moved on to the neon gel paints, which I already had that they sent me recently. <gasps> God, they're amazing. Look at it. I did do a video with them so I'll put a link to that in the description um, but it's only a few down from this video on my channel uh, and then we have dynamic blue which I think is the last one. Oh no it's not what am I talking about don't be silly we have this <gasps> gold gel paint is amazing I'm a little bit excited that I now own two of the gold and silvers oh I've got a text somebody loves me uh, we'll worry about that in a sec um, the gold and silvers because I was really scared of using them because I didn't ever want them to run out. And I now have their black and white, which I'm also very excited about. Turns out the black and white gel paints I already had were shit because the consistency was just all off. So I think these are going to up my star game, that white especially. <gasps> the silver chrome. Are you ready? I almost don't want to show you because it's so good. I want you to have it to look forward to at some point in your life. But look! You know, sometimes I can't look at things if I know they're going to be amazing because the once I've seen them, I don't have it to look forward to seeing again, you know, like the end of a book. So I know what you're thinking. You want me to poke it. I am going to poke it for you. <laughs> this is... <gasps> look at... <gasps> you know, in Terminator 2, it's that guy, the baddie, the T-1000. It's him, but it's not a futuristic evil robot sent to kill it's a very present day pot of smooth delicious liquid metal so we'll have a look at the brushes now did you know in terminator 2 i'm getting a bit excitable aren't i arnie was sent back from 2029 which is getting a bit close and based on the last few years i don't think i'm completely comfortable with that anyway divine liquid metal not out to kill you, but it does slay. Ba -dum -bum. Right, so this is how I 
clean a new brush or prep a new brush nothing fancy other people might do it a different way but I've just got some isopropyl alcohol on a lint free wipe which is in no way lint free those wipes and then I just kind of gave it a bit of a swirl and well that was it really that was about it <laughs> now it's prepped it's fine I'm using their application brush look at this mother f blue oh, that's just the best blue I think I've ever seen in my whole whole life it also matches something else in this video but we'll get to that so I I'm going to do some flames now I'm going to start with the classic sort of odd looking Y letter Y and then thicken it up in areas and I never know what to do left and to the left and right once I've done this so I just kind of do little wiggles um what was I going to say uh yes I don't use any polish, any gel polish in this video, apart from top coat, but I don't think gel paints are meant for full nail coverage. They cover a full nail perfectly well, but I mean they're for painting detail and things. If you are going to do a full nail with it, my advice would be to do it super duper 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 thin because it's so pigmented, a tiny bit goes a really long way. Um, and I do, there's a nail that I do black on and I, it was the first nail I did and I fucked up because I didn't realize how thin I needed to go. Didn't like my wiggly bits. So we're going to wipe those off and give them more kind of licks, <laughs> like a lick. And because this was on blue, I do go over the yellow with the second coat because I didn't want to put it on thick because back to what I was just saying I did the black of too thick and it crinkled in the lamp which is my fault um, but I wanted to keep this really thin and because that blue is so dark and oh it's gorgeous I did two coats of the yellow instead of doing a thick coat which would have been you know opacity wise would have been fine I wanted to keep it thin so I did two coats of the yellow just so there was no blue coming through and then I cured that and now I'm outlining with the red. How annoyed was I at this point that I hadn't done a Superman nail? Kind of annoyed. Although that S always in my head, it would be really difficult to do. Maybe one day, but definitely with these colours. So I cured the red outline and these cure for a minute. So they all had a, a full cure before going on top of them. And then I'm adding some bits of orange. I don't know if I go all the way around with the orange because I wouldn't have had much room in the um, lickety, lickety bits. <laughs> and now I'm using the chrome paint and I'm so annoyed because you just have to believe me that it looks so much better in the flesh than the camera is picking up. I don't think it's picking it up very well. You can see it better once it's top coated, but it, it really goes a long way as well same with all these gel paints I haven't got loads on my brush and it just keeps seems to keep going and going and going without having to re-dip um car going past do you mind and I have cured that and I'm topping it with their no wipe top coat making sure it's thickish to even out just any unevenness look at the chrome oh it's not showing as well on camera as it does in real life there's a couple of them that it does um but i love that it kind of looks like it's a sticker you know so now we are taking pink this pink is adorable and i've put the tiniest amount on and look how far it spreads it just it goes everywhere and it goes on really opaquely so I think I only did one coat of that and now I'm taking the black which is so much better than the black I had from a different brand. Uh, it's just a nicer consistency, it's thinner, it moves, the other brand was quite quite stiff. So I've, I've, done, I've done it faintly at first just because I was scared and now I'm going over it, I haven't cured the faint bit. I've done a little horizontal line. And then on the right, I've done an L, but the leg of the L is kind of poking upwards and then coming further down on the left side and then bringing the right side down to a point. And I want that point to sort of be central to the little horizontal line. 
at the top. It's like a, a an L with a a peg leg, <laughs> a peg legged L. That's uh, I've always struggled with lightning bolts. I haven't drawn many, but they just seemed always to be just come out looking awful. So I found a picture and just kind of copied it. So I've cured the black and then I've used the yellow in the center and then I full cured the yellow because we're putting stuff right next to it. So that now that's been full cured, I can do the orange above and the green below, then full cure that, then do the blue and then the red above the orange without curing the blue before doing the red why why do i take such a scenic route when explaining things i can do one above and below before curing there we go and because they're the consistency of them they don't move you know if you do little detail with gel polish it can kind of shrink in on itself or it can spread and kind of lose the um definition of the border of whatever you've painted but these because they you only need to put them on really thinly and they are quite firm but they're not that firm they are nice runny paints anyway they stay where you put them so you don't need to flash cure you know all the time i'm saying flash flash as you go flash as you go which is absolutely fine but with these you just don't don't need to hold them in place they are staying where you've told them to stay which i like they're obedient <laughs> so i'm now outlining again with the chrome gel paint this stuff it's so good i spent so long just kind of poking my brush in it <laughs> i'm doing the movement it doesn't look good um it was just it's just really satisfying to look at and use and it was really nice to paint with i must say it just it just felt nice it flowed nicely it was just it was a pleasure to be honest and I've cured that and we're topping with the Madame Glam No Wipe again. Again, making it kind of thickish so that we've uh, got as smooth a light line as possible. Look at the chrome here. Oh, oh, it's so good. Not usually a fan of things kind of plonked in the centre of the nail, but I think this works. It's giving me 80s Harry Potter vibes. Before we move on to the next nail, let's take a look at today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Teddy Blake New York and they have kindly sent me this gorgeous handbag. Teddy Blake New York is a designer brand focused on luxury for you. So if the extra $2,000 added to the price of a designer handbag just because of the label is a big no-no for you, then Teddy Blake is the brand you need. They have a team of Italian designers pitched from luxury brands and they create handbag designs for every style choice. But don't worry if you can't find the bag for you because they release new collections every month. Their bags are designer quality with unique style whilst they keep their price point at more affordable levels than other designer brands. The bags are made in Italy in the same factories as other luxurious designer brands and are made using premium Italian leather, which looks great, feels great, and is made to withstand the test of time. It also smells amazing. This bag smells amazing. <laughs> Their ethos is to never compromise on quality whilst foking, fo foking, foking, hello folks, whilst focusing on attention to detail, imaginative design, shape and durability. All the bags have the characteristics of high-end luxury brands without the added cost just for the label. We like that. I picked this bag, it's the Sara Oro and it's available in six different colours. I picked the blue because I've always had a thing about statement bags and coats or shoes and this blue is stunning darling uh, it took me a while to pick this one as they've got so many gorgeous designs and colors so if you have a birthday or anniversary or a tuesday coming up then head to teddyblake.com and use code tbmishjo30 for 30 percent off your order 30 percent i'm going to put the necessities in this bag um, there is not a single imperfect stitch on this bag it's absolutely immaculate the attention to detail is, is it slaps you in the face and it's really impressive in a nice way so thank you to teddy blake for sponsoring this video and sending me this bag i absolutely love it even though i'm a bit scared to use it because it's so pretty so don't forget code tbmishjo30 for 30 percent off when you shop at teddyblake.com 
Treat yourself. Or better still, get somebody else to treat you. I didn't get this on camera, but I wanted to draw yin yang, which I think is really hard to get the shapes the same. So I did a cross and then I just did half a circle going one way on the top right and then half a circle going the other way on the bottom left. Hey presto, perfectly even yin yang shape on a knot circle. And then I've added there the little circles inside each one down that center line centered on the center line so i'm using the black gel paint and this was like i said earlier this was the first nail i did so i didn't realize quite how thin i should be going or quite how far this product spreads like really far imagine far but really far <laughs> The tiniest bit goes such a long way, so I didn't realise that at this point, and I've done it all too thick. But, so it did crinkle in the lamp, but I didn't rectify it. Obviously, if I'd done this on a person, then that would be have to have been rectified. But I figured once I topped it, because it's so black, you won't see the crinkles if it's all smooth. I wasn't that worried about it, it's just a pop. So I'm going to fill in the black part, and then leaving that as much of that little circle um, towards the end, just kind of getting the bulk on everywhere and then working on this. Easier to do the circle bigger and make get smaller as you go than smaller because you can't make it bigger easily. And then, so you'll see here, I'm using the detail liner to fill in the circle. So you can see where it's crinkled a bit but I just should have done it thinner. It's it's a me thing. It's not a product thing. And I'm filling this in. I probably should have left that until the end because I have to kind of neatly now go around it with these, um, the rainbow I'm going to do from left to right. But why didn't I? I don't really know because I could have just sort of whisked into where the black circle was going to be and then plonked the black circle on top. But I think because when you, you only need to use such thin um, amounts or apply it very thinly, I didn't want to put the black on top of things because it might be, I don't know. So I do it whichever way, <laughs> whichever way you see fit, but I did it first. And then I'm taking the yellow, cured the yellow after doing that stripe and then again, I can do one colour either side of it and then cure. Oh no, I didn't do that here. I was just curing as I went and decided to put the red on next. I obviously wasn't being very logical, but that's okay. So I will cure each colour fully before putting the next one on. And we'll get our rainbow. And then the plan was to do a rainbow in the dot in the black section but I figured that would just look a bit weird because it would have to be obviously a lot smaller stripes. So I just took, look at this purple. Oh, it's lovely. Love a purple. Um, I took the colours that would be there if this was all underneath it. I mean, you could, if you wanted, do the whole nail stripey and then do the black on top. But I, I, I don't know, because then you'd have to work on your is that the yin or the yang the black i've got the clear the the white with the black dot half on my wrist and my sister's got the black with the like the negative space in the middle um tattoo wise sorry just yeah but i think yeah if you did all the stripes first then how would you sort of map out unless you didn't struggle like i did and you could just map it out perfectly fine but this way just meant there was less layers of everything going on. Wasn't looking at the screen there, was looking at my tattoo and I've completely lost what I'm talking about. Um, I'm now, oh, I topped it. Completely forgot about using the chrome, silly Joseph. So I have topped it, but just ignore that. Don't top it yet. And then I've outlined the holes and the join line in the chrome and then we're topping it. This chrome, I know gel paints, a lot of them don't need to be topped, but the chrome I believe does because I tested it. Oh, look at it. 
Look at the chrome. It's so good. It really is amazing. Um, I did a full nail in it just when I first got it. I thought I need to paint something with this immediately. Um, and I did a full nail and then I wiped it as part of an experiment. So if I'd painted on top of it with something else and then messed up and wanted to wipe it, would it still look shiny chrome once topped? And it wasn't as shiny chrome as when it's topped without having been wiped. So I recommend this um, chrome paint definitely needs to be topped. I think washing your hands and things like that might affect it. So I'm always top it that's my opinion anyway so now we're moving on to this one this was inspired by a picture I saw online and I did take a screenshot so that I could remember her name which I can't remember but I'll put it on screen and this I don't know how she managed to do a moon looking so moony coming out of the back of an eye heads up this gold bit this yellow bit's meant to be a moon um it doesn't I didn't do the best job of it it kind of looks like some kind of eyeball with a maleficent deal going on atop it but I did an open circle and then just curved the sides around to the corner of the eye and then we're doing we're adding a pupil and I'll cure that and then we're going to put some just a dot of black in the center of the pupil and then I'm going to start outlining everything and then we'll add some more bits as we go I did this one evening during Wimbledon the the tennis was done for the day and I wasn't completely sold on this nail but I convinced myself that I was only pretending to work as it was technically my holiday otherwise I might have binned this and done a different design it's just nowhere near as nice as the picture that inspired it thank you for all wishing me a happy Wimbledon Wimbledon is my favorite two weeks of the whole year just sun no work kind of and tennis all day every day a planned, scheduled middle Sunday. <gasps> it was just amazing. My camera cuts out here in a sec, but I'm just doing some straight lines for eyelashes and some dots. Um, although this Wimbledon, my phone was non-stop. It's as if everyone in the world who has my phone number thought that those two weeks would just be a perfect time to call or message and catch up on what's been going on in the last five years. No, leave me alone. <laughs> leave me alone oh what a ledge absolute leg end a foot <laughs> he was a foot a sparkly white socked foot anywho um yes I did have a lovely Wimbledon thank you um I was very sad that Rafa had to um withdraw but I'm just glad that Kyrgios didn't win <laughs> so we have added some dots and lines and now I'm adding chrome things this wasn't in the inspo picture but we have to use the chrome because it's just fudging incredible so I'm adding some lines in between the eyelashes some more lashes um, some little chrome lash extensions and then outlining in chrome as well and we will top that obviously curing it first and top that and there is my inspired by a much nicer nicer version nicer mishmani pani nicer version of this <laughs> and then is this the last one? Oh yes this is my favourite one we're starting with this bonkers yellow, Do you see how thin there's hardly any on my brush so, so thin stop shouting, I got a bit excited because we were talking about Michael Jackson and then Wimbledon I mean, that's just brilliant combination <laughs> so I've done, I think I did two coats thin 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 coats of the yellow and then I'm taking the black and starting to draw a UFO don't don't do this bit here that was wrong um I end up changing it a bit because I realized it looked more like a bowler hat <laughs> than a UFO a UF H an unidentified flying hat <laughs> Um, so I take the sides out and that rectifies it. Boom, just like that. That's more classic flying saucer shape. Or maybe do do that kind of smile then, but just lower down from the initial hump. And then we will cure that. And then I'm going to do some rainbow beams, which I think I've done in a video before, just a one-off video. 
um, on like a blue sky, a more classically coloured sky, but we're going for crazy colours here. And yes, I am painting the yellow stripe. There is a reason why. Shall I bore you with it? No. Um, oh, sorry. Another message. P.S. A guy said to me. Oh, ooh. Right. Um, and now we're adding the rest of the lines. I'm so easily distracted. Only when it comes to nail videos, doing voiceovers or when I'm on screen. The rest of my life, <laughs> I am quite capable of focusing on something and not getting so distracted. I'm just nervous, okay? I'm nervous. It's scary. It's nerve-wracking to talk and especially be on screen. So I'm adding the rays, again, curing, full curing and then doing one colour either side and then full curing and carrying on. I'm not sure how even I got my beams. Do you know what I should have done? This would be better. Do a thin line of red coming out on the left and then a thin line of purple coming out on the right so you can see um, that the shape of your whole, the full um, spectrum of the beam is going to be even and then fill in from there. But I do like to start from the middle um, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six colours. There's not a middle colour. So I do the right side of the yellow in the centre and the left side of the green in the centre. And then I'm adding some little chromey details to our UFO and then some chrome separating the lines. And then I got carried away <laughs> and because I realised this was the last nail and... I wanted to use more chrome, so I ended up filling in the top part, the humpy bit. It probably would have made more sense to fill in, do it the other way around to what I've done, but it's done now. And then we will top that with the no wipe as well, nice and thick. Not crazy, crazy thick that it's going to burn your client. I mean, a little bit of a burn's not going to kill anyone. <laughs> And that is our UFO. And here is the final set. If you haven't used Madame Glam's gel paints before, I highly recommend giving them a go because they're so nice to work with. I always thought I didn't need gel paints, gel polish will do, but it's so much easier to paint details with gel paints. Um, and I absolutely love these. And that chrome is bananas. Let me know in the comments which one is your favourite. I appreciate you being here so, so much. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, bye.